very first episode of Saxpeditions, we went to the MLs in Special Collections and learned pretty quickly that we don't have a lot of the M call number range over in Special Collections. And there's a very specific reason for that. We have the Arthur and Miriam Cantor Rare Book Room in the Rita Benton Music Library. And so that's where we are on tour today for Saxpeditions for Lavenrack on Tumblr and uh, several of our followers on Twitter who all wanted M call number ranges. We'll find them here today. Hi, I'm here with Katie Buhner, who is head of the Rita Benton Music Library and she is going to introduce us to the M call number range. Hi Katie, can you tell us about the M call number range? I can. The M call number range is used for music, M for music, which is pretty cool. Thank you Oscar Sonic, the Library of Congress. Uh, so we have three different sections in the M call number range. We have M, which is for scores, so printed music, actual you know notes and stacks and uh, trouble clefs and whatnot. And then we also have ML, uh, which is going to be books about music. So you have biographies, histories, mm -hmm. books about philosophy, psychology of music. And then MT, which is music theory, teaching, so books of analysis, uh, where we break down music into its parts, books about how to teach music. Um, all sorts of other teaching texts, and so you'll find methods books there. It's a pretty cool call range. We're very happy to have it. So Katie, what are we going to see in the rare book room today? Well, we had jokingly discussed about nine months ago that we would approach this like a wedding. We're going to look at something old, something new, something borrowed, and something blue. Which there's a lot of because we pan bind a lot of things, so there's blue binders everywhere. Okay. Well, that sounds like a pretty good expedition, so let's go. All right. Okay, Katie, we'll start with old. Well, our oldest item is actually in the conservation lab being relaxed. It got a little bit tight and was, the edges were curling. So uh, our second oldest item in the rare book room is from 1582 and is this Roman right book. Uh, you can look through the pages and see the uh, red text and the very nice um, square news. And four lines in the music staff. Yes. You can see, remember when we talked about the kustos that shows what note is going to be on the next line in one of the If Books Could Talk episodes. Uh, there's all sorts of gems like that in this text as well, and you can see this just lovely, um, I can't remember the technical Gothard word for edges. Thank you, Colleen. This is why I hang out with the special <laughs> collections librarians. Uh, Nerds. <laughs> and also some just really, the, the binding is, is lovely as well, This these um, impressions. So. That being said, I had to pull up this <laughs> item as well because we love to show this. Uh, this is another Roman Rite book and it actually has this beautiful um, printing of the Guidonian hand. Uh, the Guidonian hand was used to teach singing to choir boys and so each different part of the hand, in particular the joints, would be uh, labeled with a different solfege syllable. And I, Theorists can explain this much better than I can, but sure. it's, a, it's a very famous uh, mechanism from music history and music theory. Yeah. So it's it's wonderful to show. And this gets used in classes quite a lot. This gets pulled up for classes, for displays, for discussion. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's a very popular item. So, And it also has a lovely binding with some nice gold uh, little bits on the spine and on the cover. So next up, Katie, is new. Well, I wasn't sure whether or not you wanted something new in terms of like published recently or if you wanted something new to the room, but I went with Published recently, but mm -hmm. that being said, this isn't like 21st century. This is 20th century, but still, it's too fun, so I have to show it. <laughs> as long as it's a favorite. It's a favorite. So this is actually a piece composed by a University of Iowa composer named um, Peter Todd Lewis. And he was the gentleman who ran the electronic music studio here at the University of Iowa. And this is a piece called Elkazar Three, And I think that you would in particular like to read the instructions. Start at the beginning, go to the end, and then stop. The Red Queen to Alice. Excellent instructions. And, uh, <laughs> but the, the other instructions say, the score is a maze, which is entered at the lower right, in which each performer proceeds to work through at his own pace, playing all pitches <laughs> encountered in any register and as soft as possible. Exercise care and patience. When the final note is reached, sustain it for about five seconds, gradually diminuendo. The piece is over when everyone is finished, Optional, a player may start the maze again 10 seconds after completing his first round. And so it's this piece... <laughs> it's, there's other musical... Uh, sure, uh, sure. But it's, sure, yes. It, it, has very, it has elements of that. And 
you can see the maze. And we have multiple copies, so you can have multiple players. But this is one of those pieces that, almost like some older songbooks, you could have four players standing yeah. in each corner, and they could all play off of the same score. So, yes, how good are you at mazes? It's absolutely terrible. Yeah, me too. So I, I have I, I want to hear this play, but I don't know that I want to be one of the players. So Wait, maybe one day. One day. Yes. Watch for it. Alcazar three. Okay, the next one is borrowed, and for this one, I'm actually really curious what you find because usually people borrow things from a library. You don't think of a library collection as. I don't associate borrow with the collection itself. And that's not the angle I took. Because we okay. don't tend to lend items or yeah. borrow items for the rare book room. It would be sort of odd. That, that's why I was a little puzzled how you go about completing the borrowed one. So I went with borrowed music. So a oh. work that contains music borrowed from another piece. Okay. How's that? Nice. All right, there we go. Nice. Are. So in this piece, this is called The Haunted Tower, and it is a comic <gasps> opera in three acts by Stephen Storis, uh, composed, performed in 1789 and performed at the Theatre Royal in Drury Lane. You'll notice that it says the music is selected, adapted, and composed by Stephen Storis. So that means that he didn't write the whole thing. He's taken pieces from other people's work and he's tweaked them and made them into something new. And in particular, you'll notice this uh, in the score. I'll have to go find an example, but there are many. And this was very common for comic rappers of the day. In particular, I wanted to show this one. This is a song sung by Mrs. Crouch, and you'll notice that in the corner it says Playel. Oh! Because the music is actually by a gentleman by the name of Ignaz Playel. And the reason that we probably have this piece, and it has music borrowed by Playel, um, is important to us, is because we hold a very large collection of early editions of Ignaz Palaio's music. He was the composer that Rita Benton, our music library's namesake, studied, and so we have actually, I've looked it up before and I didn't have my notes on it to pull for today, but I've actually looked up which piece this is using the thematic catalog she created of Palaio's works. And so you'll find that there, he is not the only composer whose work is, um, you'll notice that Storis is actually credited with this piece, but this shows this is a Welsh, Welsh tune. tune. Which is probably Welsh. Um, <laughs> and uh, there are other examples in here. Paisiello? So he's borrowing music from all kinds of composers um, and giving it new text, maybe taking bits and pieces and cobbling them together uh, for songs in this work. So he's borrowing melodies. Nice. Yeah, I was pretty proud of this one. Yep. Okay, good. For blue, Katie sent me into the rare book room to pick a blue book, and so this is the one that I picked. The Rheingold of the Valkyrie, because I saw on the spine that it has illustrations by Arthur Rackham, and I haven't seen these before. This is actually a very well-known set, um, Arthur Rackham illustrating the, um, op uh, the operas of Richard Wagner, the Ring Cycle. So we have Rheingold and Valkyrie here in one volume, and... Oh. Yeah, exactly. Oh. You open them up and that is what happens. It's people's ooh and ah because the the really Rackham illustrating this is it's perfect. He is the ideal illustrator for this particular oh god. There's a Facebook group devoted to end sheets. I will post this one there. Oh, so pretty. <laughs> Raging Votan rides to the rock like a storm when he comes. And I mean you can just slip through this all day long and find just the gorgeousness of the illustrations. And I'm really glad that this was the one with the blue binding. We also have um, the, we also have the rack of for the other two operas in the ring cycle, uh, Siegfried and Das Gatherdamrung, and this one uh, has Valkyrie, which is my favorite of the cycle. So I was glad that you picked this. You can see the Brian Maiden. Yeah. Um, actually, I want to flip to the back and see if I can find Brynhilda in the Ring of Fire, which is like my favorite scene. Yeah. Okay, that's, that's incredible. It's dated 1910, um, and this particular book is, was dated 1913, but it said it was a third edition, or a third printing. Yeah. So, as he moves slowly away, Botone turns and looks sorrowfully back at Brunhilde. Oh, God. I just love that. It's a marvelous scene. <sighs> the color is really great, too. 
And it has a blue binding. And it has a blue binding. So we have, you know, inaugurated the rare book room to stacks positions in, in good fashion, I believe. Yes. Something old, something new, something borrowed. And I'm looking for this book. I think the cover was blue. Yeah, that's about right. Enjoy!